Decisions made by companies during the time of the pandemic uh, were very unpopular, leading to people's careers facing the sunset. Retrenchments resulted in a serious halt of income and a very gloomy picture of what the future looks like. And one can imagine how the unemployed are coping and of course the anxiety that comes about when other people are being retrenched as we speak now. So let's just get the mood uh, of uh, what's going on in the minds of people who are receiving retrenchment letters now. Devin Munthami, CEO of uh, IHF Training Institute. Uh, good afternoon to you and welcome. A very good afternoon to you too, Colin. Nice to be talking to you today. Yeah, well, well, it's nice to be talking to me today, but where I am right now, it's not really a nice environment. I mean, the atmosphere is rather, rather, very, very tense and somber. So, so now let's get to the mindset of the prevailing situation now. Well, what's your impact assessment on people who have lost their jobs, looking at their careers coming to an end? I mean, like, with the full understanding of COVID-19 and the implications thereof, but I mean like an individual losing an income and going home for the last time at their workplace, I mean, that's painful. Very painful indeed. And firstly, we have to empathize with all those individuals who have been affected by the situation. And we depend heavily on stats and reports for, uh, such as Stats SA and what they've recently reported in that 8.1% of, of respondents out of the group that they had surveyed um, had lost jobs as a result of business closure or organizations who simply decided to shut their doors as a result of the COVID pandemic. So the situation is dire. And if you look at it, I mean, close to 10%, people who comfortably were employed previously and now find themselves in a situation where they simply don't have work and some people, unfortunately, weren't even in the comfortable situation or position to get a severance package or have provident funds available to them to use. So, yes, the mindset for those individuals, I would imagine at this stage, would be one of anxiety, one of uncertainty, and one um, at the moment of where do I go to next with my budget and what is it that I can do? So a very desperate, sad situation for many South Africans who have been retrenched, Colin. Mm. And you know, like to receive a retrenchment package is something that one would not even know whether they should appreciate the amount of money at hand or they should worry about how long that money will last for in the meantime when they're still hustling and sustaining themselves. So with not having additional income for the coming months, how does one act? What's the first step to take? With those individuals who have received some compensation from their organization, it's easy to look at that money as a, as a lump sum and then make rash decisions based on having this large sum of money in your account. But what we must do is be very rational in terms of how we're going to be spending this, this available funds. We remember, we don't know how long it's going to take for each individual to be able to find future employment. So making very big financial investments with the monies that they've received, if you were fortunate enough to actually receive money and if you had something saved away by your organization. So making very big commitments now would not necessarily be the best idea. Some people look at great business opportunities or they look at partnerships with other individuals. I'm going to caution South Africans to be very, very careful about the way in which you're spending that money simply because uh, this money has to sustain you now because there's a lack of income coming from your regular source, remember. This is now a whole new uh, mindset change, a paradigm shift. I've got to be able to cope without earning an income and the money I have available to me needs to be utilized for the most urgent, important things. Mm, so then how does one deal with insurance premiums and life covers, you know, the bonds kind installments in the meantime? Uh, should they cancel some or should they return their cars, leave their houses if there isn't any propensity to settle those huge loan amounts plus interest? Mm. You see, it would be irresponsible for anybody to simply just go and cancel any existing policy out of sheer panic. And I understand that some South Africans may say, well, I don't really need this. It's just money going out of my account. I'll manage the risk. 
what I say to that is be very careful. Some policies have been in place for years and years and years, and people may stand a risk of losing that money that they've already spent. We'll be surprised also as far as life cover, et cetera, is concerned, that some insurance providers are very open to having a discussion around putting that policy on hold for a couple of months. And once the policy is on hold, it allows us the freedom or breathing space to find other employment and perhaps even uh, may, when we get employment, reinstate the policy. So it is possible that they could even put this on hold. Also, now we won't be using our vehicle as much, and some vehicles are financed. So remember, if you're going to be stopping your vehicle finance in, uh, insurance, and if something happens to that vehicle, we end up in a worse situation than what we were before, because we're still liable for that debt if it wasn't insured. And in, in some cases, that's the first thing to sort of go out of our budget. So it's important to engage with the insurance provider and ask them what relief measures they are. If you're not driving as much because you're now retrenched, some insurance providers will come down with an insurance premium because you're not using your vehicle as much. I've seen many insurance companies encouraging their people to tell us what mileage are you currently doing versus what you used to do when you were employed. And now you people are also Zooming and people are now on team meetings, et cetera. So therefore, people are not driving as much. So have a serious assessment of what policies you should be holding on to and make slight adjustments so that you could amend the premiums. And when you start employment again, you're able to then pay those premiums, continue from where you left off. Some insurance companies will bring it right down, do a proper assessment, and then when you find work again, you could come back up. Okay, just uh, on the confidence level issues, um, when we talk about uh, self-affirmation, self-rewards, and I wouldn't like to touch on the issue of keeping up with the Joneses, but sometimes there would be revenge shopping that, you know what, I'm going through a lot and I don't care, I just want to spoil myself just for a moment. So, so now what's your warning to people when it comes to uh, comparing themselves with other people, especially dealing with low self-esteem issues? Because you know, during these times, one, one's ego may also be under threat. How do people perceive me? They see me as I has been. So how do I do things to defend this ego so that I can stay and look confident, whereas I know what's really happening behind the scenes? Mm. You're absolutely right. The ego is a factor, confidence is a factor, levels of self-esteem. Because remember, once the person was employed, they enjoyed all the benefits of employment, shop at certain stores, buying luxuries, maybe eating out maybe once a week or twice a week with their families. Remember, all of these things are, are very nice to have if you have the necessary resource to be able to sustain it. We, you mentioned it, keeping up with the Joneses. Remember, one has to be incredibly mindful now that sustaining ourselves is at the forefront. So as opposed to now comparing my current status or comparing my lifestyle with somebody else's, I need to be able to hold a mirror and reflect on what's going on right now in my current space. And once we have a serious paradigm shift or a mindset shift in terms of my current state, and I accept my situation, I'm in better control to manage it. So I would encourage South Africans who are going through a difficult period, instead of going out and just binge shopping or going out and spending, spending, rather reflect, turn inwards, have a deep conversation with the self and accept the situation. When we accept this current situation, we stand in a zone of control. And once I'm standing in control because I've accepted it now, I'm more rational in my thinking and I can influence the outcome. So I'm influencing the way I spend. I influence where I'm having dinner. I'm influencing how I'm actually saving and allocating my funds. It starts with acceptance, thus giving us a level of self-control. And the self-control will speak to the ego and, and uh, lower levels of self-esteem. All right, so I would like to talk about, you know, possibilities. Sometimes one would not be sure after how long they'll get a job. So when you talk about a pipeline, you wouldn't know how long it is. When it comes to downgrading, let's say you live in Joburg and you're paying 15,000 rents 
three months and you're not working and you hope to get a job after three months and that doesn't happen. And with the benefit of hindsight, you say, I should have actually downgraded and left earlier. I can even move from the Gauteng province and go back to my original home in another province. Uh, what must one do when things are uncertain, like you were mentioning? That's a very good point when you look at housing. Some people I know, or some people who've been retrenched in organizations have been sharing ideas with each other through support groups and other platforms. Some have even decided to give up home, maybe co-share with somebody else if they had a second and third bedroom to ease in the burden or lessen the burden on the bond. And some have gone to live with their parents. Parents can be very supportive or brothers and sisters or other siblings in different provinces or regions. They can serve as a safety net in terms of allowing that individual to stay in their homes for a period of the job search or the job hunting. And thus, the person could rent out their apartment to somebody who needs it. I know that Airbnb is starting to become a little bit more popular now, and maybe even draw an income from that property. Um, sometimes it may be difficult to get out of a lease, but again, you need to speak to your landlord and then say to your landlord that I plan on moving back with my parents. Is there any way we could re-advertise this property, even though I'm not uh, fully out of my lease as yet and I've got another six months or whatever the case is. So looking at your current living conditions and when people cohabitat and people co-share at family homes, parents, sisters, brothers, etc., it's a comfortable space because you know them and they will be able to support and help you. Remember, this is also not a permanent uh, problem. This situation will improve jobs will stabilize. And one has to be very, very optimistic and keep a very clear, cool head now. Because the reality is that it won't always be like this. So the more motivated you are, the better energy and the better vibe you're gonna take into that interview. Send your CV out, make sure that you engaging and networking, join different platforms like LinkedIn and join different communities and groups where they talk about these things. And then you make yourself a little bit more attractive to finding employment. And there are also wonderful opportunities available online for so many different uh, reasons and ways. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for your heartfelt advice and, and commentary on this subject. It's a very emotional one. And I must say that since 2020, every time when we have to call you up to talk about this painful experience, uh, you know, like the first cut is the deepest, but uh, for me, it doesn't sound like a scratching CD. Every time when we have to engage, uh, yeah, it's not a nice thing to be retrenched. <laughs> no. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, All right. It's never a comfortable thing. All right. Thank you so much for your time.